Good afternoon, everyone, uh, to the public high value data set session, current pack practices and next steps towards public data spaces. Some, uh, some easy rules for the session, so all the participants except speakers and moderator will be mute by default. Uh, in, uh, for the speaker, if you are not speaking, please uh, turn your camera off. Uh, feel free, or it better, we encourage you to post your question in, in Q&A box on WOVA. Uh, if you would like to speak, please raise your hand and we, the, the moderator will give you the floor. For any technical issue, please uh, contact the Zoom host or co-host. So, uh, the moderator of the session uh, will be uh, Vega Rodriguez Varez from uh, Iternova. She is project manager there. Uh, together with me, Roberto Di Bernardo, I'm from uh, Engineering Engineering Informatica in the R&D laboratory, uh, in particular focusing on innovation for public sector and smart cities. Uh, Vegan and I co-lead co the smart governance and smart city subgroup within BDVA uh, that was where this session was defined. Uh, you have heard for sure in the, uh, yesterday, but also this morning that uh, the world is full of data, uh, but, and that this data is mostly unreused, but I would add it's even less reused. Uh, in this sense, uh, in, the, in that direction, uh, uh, the European Commission is pushing more and more. The Open Data uh, Directive is changing the perspective uh, um, in particular, focusing on the reuse of uh, uh, data uh, for economic aspects, uh, rather than on access to information by citizens. Here, public sector bodies are encouraged to make such information more and more available and more and more reusable as, uh, as much as possible. Uh, of the key uh, pillar of uh, uh, this action of the directive is transparency and fair competition. But uh, in addition, uh, the directive requires the, the adoption of high value data sets that should be provided free of charge in machine readable format and through APIs. Again, the stressing on high commercial potential in particular to speed up the uh, EU-wide information products and, and development of AI, European AI. Uh, some uh, specific categories have been uh, identified for this A-value data set here reported in the right side of the slide, geospatial, earth observation, meteorological, statistics, uh, companies and company ownership and mobility. What's next? At the moment, there is a big push and, and a lot of uh, uh, investment have been already done by the Commission. Uh, just think about the European Data Portal, the, pro the Connecting Europe Facility program, and what is coming next is also the Digital European Program, where there is a specific action on boosting for public open data uh, be used in uh, for AI purposes. Uh, how we go, go, how we are going through these uh, uh, topics? Uh, introduction already done. We have keynote speech session focusing, introducing to the Open Data Directive, uh, focusing on specific uh, categories of high value data set that are the statistical one, and then uh, looking at the opportunities that high value data set can play with smart cities and local communities. Uh, we are going to have a panel session uh, where three projects are providing their perspective and open discussion. We will be uh, uh, brought end in end uh, in this journey by uh, outstanding uh, keynote speaker and the speakers, I will introduce them by, by one by one. And of course, I mentioned the three projects, uh, Interstat, Odala, and Yoda. And also we have, are going to have uh, an open discussion with the 
uh, who actively is uh, uh, carrying out uh, in the action in this project together with the, all the audience. Uh, so again, this is, I'm encouraging you to post your question uh, since the beginning. So please start uh, already now. Uh, here are the key uh, aspect we are going to consider to talk about during uh, the session. Now I'm stopping myself and uh, I start passing the floor to the keynote speaker. Uh, so the, the, first, the first speaker is uh, uh, Francesco Muredu. Uh, he's an analyst and strategist in uh, innovation and policy policies. Uh, Francesco has supported several uh, projects and uh, consult, consult both consultancy and research projects in a variety of topics such as digital transformation, big data, and artificial intelligence. At the moment, Francesco is director at the Belgian Think Tank, the Lisbon Council. Uh, Francesco, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Roberto. One second that I will uh, start sharing my presentation. Okay, uh, so in my presentation, I'm going to present briefly uh, a study that uh, was carried out by the Lisbon Council together with uh, Deloitte uh, and uh, uh, some other institutions uh, on the uh, impact of high value uh, data sets. Uh, but first, uh, I'm going to present a little bit uh, uh, the Lisbon Council and uh, 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 what we do, and then uh, I'm going to uh, fo be focused on the, on the study. So, as we said, the data is everywhere. Data is everywhere, but uh, the uh, potential of data is not yet uh, uh, completely uh, exploited because uh, data is not reused enough. And uh, uh, this is a very important uh, issue if we take into account that data is very necessary to create uh, and to reinforce uh, a digital single market in Europe. So as I said, is, uh, my name is Francesco Muredo, I'm director at the Lisbon Council. So the Lisbon Council is a think tank that was founded uh, in uh, 2003 as a non-profit association. And uh, the Lisbon Council was set up to uh, basically support uh, uh, the Lisbon agenda, which is the European uh, uh, programs uh, for jobs and the growth. And uh, our domains and activities are uh, related to policy research prog programs in open uh, and the government, future science, uh, uh, transformation of public administration. Uh, and uh, we are also very well known for organizing high level uh, summits and, uh, and the round tables uh, for our uh, work in community building and uh, in developing uh, uh, smart crowdsourcing tools for policy analysis. At the moment we are engaged in a variety of, uh, of projects. Uh, we uh, recently uh, uh, gain, um, won the, the proposal Spotted, uh, which is a SEF public open data with the role of coordinators. It's a, um, on, it's a SEF on the reuse of open data for smart city services development. We are also engaged in a variety of Horizon 2020 projects like uh, the SIDO uh, together with engineering uh, in which uh, we, we develop uh, a cloud for data-driven policy making at APAS, uh, which deals with eti ethical adoptions, uh, ethical technology adoption in public administration, especially of disruptive technologies, and ACROSS, uh, which deals uh, with uh, uh, delivery of cross-border services uh, uh, for citizens uh, while ensuring privacy and data uh, sovereignty. So uh, the, uh, our project, uh, it's an impact assessment study on the list of uh, high value data set that uh, uh, has been made available by uh, the member states uh, uh, according to the PSI directive. And the objective of this study is basically to uh, define which are those uh, high value data set and to study what is the impact from the economic point of view and also the impact of, the, uh, of several policy options regarding the publication of those uh, data sets. I will go very quickly because the study goes on for, uh, let's say, for the final report for more than 400 pages. So it's a lot of uh, material. 
so this is just a, a very uh, a snapshot of the uh, of the policy overview. Uh, as we can see, uh, the policy on open data, on public open data, has been uh, carried out for the last uh, 30 years. Uh, what we can uh, what we can uh, mm, uh, show are, for instance, the PSI directives. So the first PSI directive, the second PSI directive, and the third PSI directive, which is just uh, from uh, 2019. And the study on high-value data sets is basically uh, uh, the, the last of the policy initiatives that uh, has been uh, carried out uh, uh, within the scope of, uh, of the topic. So uh, the main objective, as we said, is to um, uh, basically uh, giving an evaluation of the high value data sets, of the publication of the high value data sets that have been identified in the Annex 1 of the, of the uh, uh, PSI directive, which are geospatial, earth observation and environment, meteorological, statistical, uh, companies and company ownership, and, uh, and the transport. So to give uh, some example, geospatial data are, for instance, uh, cadastral maps, uh, marine data sets, uh, uh, as the Open Data Hub, natural health data, earth observation and environment, meteorological, of course, weather uh, data coming from weather station, climate model data, historical climate data. Statistics are economic data, like um, uh, data regarding GDP, inflation rates, at local, national, and EU level, health-related data, demographic data. Data on companies and company ownership are, uh, for instance, data from corporate registers, uh, merchant and market register, market position. Mobility are uh, tra public transport data and aggregated uh, urban mobility uh, data. Those are just uh, some, some examples. So uh, the, uh, the project took uh, um, place in uh, uh, five uh, different, uh, along five different uh, uh, tasks and steps. So at the beginning, we developed a methodology for the identification and quantification of the socioeconomic benefits of a high value data set. This is a very controversial topic. In fact, uh, we have been struggling with uh, uh, the evaluation of open data for a long time at the moment. Then we defined a set of policy, possible options for regulatory intervention. We analyzed the, the possible impact of uh, uh, the reuse of those uh, data sets. And uh, uh, we also uh, finalized, we also carried out uh, um, an economic, socioeconomic analysis of the selected policy options from the macroeconomic uh, level uh, and point of view. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, let's say the, the methodology for the evaluation of uh, high value data sets was focused on two main dimensions. So, the economic dimension, uh, like uh, uh, the, the, the cost of produce, the marginal cost of producing those data, complementary investments, uh, the uh, possibility to exclude others from using this, uh, this data. And from the information lens, uh, taking into account uh, interoperability, quality, sensitivity, temporal coverage, and so on and so forth. Especially metadata was one of the, uh, one of the core subjects of our analysis. Uh, this is just an example of uh, uh, the data that we, we studied. So, uh, we are considering here a company and company ownership, so the uh, overview of data sets in scope. And we defined uh, uh, two main options, a low intensity intervention, in way, according to which uh, uh, what we ask to, to be published is basic information, company documents and account and non-personal data related to company ownership, and higher intensity option intervention according to which uh, the, the, in this, in this uh, scenario, what has to be published, uh, it's also company ownership data and company insolvency status. So as we can see, uh, the uh, red additions are related to higher intensity option intervention. And uh, obviously the, uh, in the uh, higher intensity option intervention, there is more value for the data. Uh, so this is uh, an example. Uh, so the recommended measures for publications, um, we see the dimension like uh, openness, uh, documentation, and completeness. 
and we see the uh, classification of information like basic information, company documents, and company ownership. So uh, this is the uh, those are the requirements for the low intensity intervention. Then I can obviously uh, provide you with uh, with the uh, uh, report when it will be published. And this is an example instead of higher intensity intervention. So in this case, uh, what, is, what does it change? We, it changes that we are uh, asking to provide a company ownership, like individual owner, beneficial owner, and uh, a company status, like uh, at individual company level, like uh, solvency and so on and so forth. So those two uh, options for publication uh, have been evaluated uh, distinctively. Uh, what did we do from um, the macroeconomic uh, point of view? Uh, basically, uh, we estimated the economic impact of high-value data sets and the contribution to GDP according to a top-down uh, approach, starting from uh, an extrapolation of the study by Vickery in uh, 2000, carried out in 2011, and the forecast of the European uh, data market uh, monitoring tool. Uh, there, there have been uh, three main steps. Uh, the first step is the um, estimate of the baseline. Uh, the second step is the estimation of the uh, share attributable to high-value data set. So, uh, the Vickery uh, 2011 uh, uh, study gave us uh, a kind of evaluation of open data, while the EU market uh, data study that was carried out by the uh, Lisbon Council and uh, uh, IDC uh, gave, uh, 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 let's say, an idea of the growth path of those, uh, those data. And at the end, uh, we uh, did the, the impact assessment of the different policy options. And we also carried out uh, um, um, multi-criteria analysis to choose which policy option uh, was the, the preferred. So um, this is- uh, Sorry, one minute sir, left. One minute left, okay. So I go straight to the, <laughs> to the impact assessment. So this is the uh, impact assessment, the preliminary results. Uh, uh, basically, uh, we estimated for each category of high value data set, uh, the impact uh, in case the policy option for uh, publication one is, cho is chosen or the policy option for publication two is chosen. As we can see, uh, um, the, the policy options that uh, require a um, bigger, uh, let's say, a more extensive level of publication of data are the ones with the, the, the biggest uh, uh, impact. Then we also carried out a, a multi-criteria analysis to see um, uh, according to which policy, option, which policy option was preferred for each uh, database. And then we go to the end. Uh, so basically, uh, the, our uh, multi-criteria analysis showed that uh, uh, for uh, uh, thematic areas like company and company ownership, geospatial data, its observation, uh, and environment and mobility, a lower intensity intervention in terms of uh, uh, requirements for publication is preferred, while in the thematic area, meteorological data and statistics, uh, uh, higher intensity intervention is the, is the preferred option. So this is just to give you a snapshot of the, of the study and then uh, uh, the study will be uh, available uh, very soon, uh, will be published very soon uh, in some weeks. So uh, it will be publicly available and it will be my pleasure to, uh, uh, to disseminate to, to all the attendants. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, thanks a lot to Francesco for, uh, for this. Um, now, uh, you have talked, uh, you have introduced us uh, in, the, in this study for the high value data set. You, in particular, now have just mentioned the high inten intensive intervention, the, the option uh, selected, uh, let's say, for the uh, statistics uh, high value data set. So, this perfectly introduces uh, the next, uh, uh, st uh, the next uh, uh, session. Uh, that uh, it's about uh, uh, the role or of statistical service in the new uh, data ecosystem. Uh, I am, I'm passing the floor. I'm proud to pass the floor to Emanuele Baldacci, that is uh, 
the director of resources and uh, chief innovation officer at Eurostat, uh, the, Euromia, and the European Commission. I, I would like also to mention that before he was director at digital service uh, to the European Commission, director, director general for informatics, with a, a strong link with the ISA Square uh, program where uh, that is uh, really close to uh, the, the sector more where we are talking about, so public sector and local community. Uh, Emanuele, please, the floor is yours. Just let me know when I should change the slide. Thanks a lot, Roberto, uh, for this uh, introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, also thanks to Francesco, who uh, uh, presented very nicely and gave me an assist to introduce the topic uh, related to uh, statistics, which, as in the results uh, uh, from uh, his uh, study, it plays a central role in, uh, in the data ecosystem. So I will spend uh, uh, the next 10 minutes uh, by uh, trying to situate uh, how statistics uh, and official statistics in particular is evolving and how this is playing uh, in tune with the evolution, both technical but also legal, of the uh, data ecosystem. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, the important, uh, uh, can I have the next slide, Roberto, please? So uh, in this new uh, data ecosystem that uh, it's uh, uh, evolving, uh, there are uh, two critical changes that are happening. Uh, I, I still don't see the slides moving, but perhaps it's just me. Eh? Uh, anyway, I will continue uh, and hopefully you can follow me. So uh, in this new uh, data landscape, uh, the key innovation is the European data strategy, which is uh, uh, changing the way the um, data sharing is uh, enabled and puts together both legal and technical uh, uh, support to uh, share data across different stakeholders uh, in a sustainable way and also putting in place technologies that would help us. And that, in a nutshell, uh, makes it uh, very important for the official statisticians to play a different role compared to the past. So if you can go to the next slides, uh, although I don't see the slides moving. Well, you, you should have seen that uh, uh, official statistics is in this new data ecosystem is uh, uh, responding to two types of pressures. On the one hand, on the demand side, there is an increasing need for information for different purposes. Decision makers ask for data on a more timely basis. Think about the recent COVID crisis, for example, and how this uh, resulted in more uh, uh, real-time information needs. At the same time, uh, while there is a, an increasing demand, and the uh, statisticians cannot just use the traditional data sources to do their job because that would be a limitation. And fortunately, technology and the data uh, um, supplies are, uh, uh, let's say, evolving in the direction of making available so-called big data sources that can be used for the production of statistics. So if you put the supply and demand side together, you can see that uh, uh, official statisticians and the national statistical offices in particular can be enabled to play a different role uh, that goes beyond the, the uh, traditional one. The traditional one was uh, based on uh, uh, using traditional sources to produce statistical information uh, to respond to uh, users' needs. In this new uh, data ecosystem, the possibilities of playing a more proactive data stewardship uh, uh, role is, uh, um, is uh, envisaged and it's uh, facilitated. Uh, yes, I see comments that you're not seeing anything. I also don't see anything on the screen, but uh, hopefully you can uh, still follow the main messages. So uh, what is this data stewardship role about? I think it's, uh, uh, it can be combined in three directions. First, uh, this is related to government to business data sharing. And this is uh, very much about uh, the uh, um, uh, high value data sets that were mentioned before. Uh, uh, official statistics makes available, uh, uh, next slide please, a collection of uh, uh, high value data sets in the domain of statistics. Uh, traditionally, uh, statisticians have been publishing a lot of their data uh, already uh, in an open uh, data uh, mode, uh, available free of charge, uh, machine readable, and uh, typically provided with APIs. Now, in addition to that, uh, let's say the 
catalog of data that will be offered will be enriched, but particularly the metadata, the information about the data will be curated because this is a particular enabler for uh, ensuring interoperability across different data spaces and also ensuring that uh, this uh, uh, interoperability and data integration, which is really where the extraction of value out of the data come from, can be uh, done in a more automatic way without the recourse to manual intervention. But that's just one of the three avenues where the uh, statistical system is playing a more active role. The second uh, dimension, and uh, uh, please go to the next slide, it's the uh, B2G uh, uh, data sharing. And this is uh, the uh, content of uh, work that was recently done uh, in the commission. There was a report in 2020 by an expert group on business to government data sharing. And now recently Eurostat uh, uh, launched uh, a new high level uh, expert group on business to government data sharing for statistics. And this uh, expert group will advise the commission on what are the sustainable modalities for facilitating the use of new data sources for the production of statistics. This will be accompanied also by a position paper by the European uh, statistical offices uh, uh, asking the Commission to uh, um, promote more sustainable access to this data, which at the moment is based on partnerships, uh, um, memorandum of understanding, but it's still very fragmented and doesn't have a sufficient legal basis to uh, get the right scale to uh, enrich the amounts of data sets that eventually can be disseminated for different purposes. And then the third line uh, in uh, uh, Next slide, please. Uh, that is uh, uh, related to the new role of statistical offices as data stewardship is related to C2G and uh, the Data Governance Act uh, that has been proposed by the commissions a few months ago envisages the role of uh, data intermediaries and also facilitates the use uh, of uh, data on voluntary basis. And uh, statistics is recognized as one area of uh, general interest where uh, this uh, uh, use of C2G uh, mechanism should be uh, prioritized. So once you put all this together, and please go to the next slide, which is also the last one, then what remains to be done is uh, uh, changing the machinery and uh, the machinery for producing statistics. And this is where technology innovation plays a very important role. Uh, in other words, uh, we, when moving uh, from uh, a traditional world where administrative, uh, administrative data and survey data were the only uh, inputs into the production processes for uh, the production of statistical data sets uh, into a world which is much richer in terms of sources, uh, we need to take care of several things. One is that the quality of the uh, data uh, from collection to dissemination is at the standards uh, that are consistent with the frameworks uh, that govern uh, official statistics, which are the highest uh, standards in terms of quality, accountability, and replicability. Secondly, that the engine that you see in the red square uh, at the center of the slide uh, is uh, uh, revamped in such a way that you have uh, processing capabilities uh, that are uh, augmented so that uh, uh, multiple data sources can be uh, used. And here, cloud infrastructure, use of uh, artificial intelligence uh, engine, particularly privacy enhancing technologies that would allow to use uh, and compute data in compliance with GDPR and produce statistics in compliance with statistical confidentiality are of importance, not only for the statistical sector, but also for the public sector at large. Because by using or reusing these tools and these uh, algorithms, other administrations in the government can offer more and more uh, open data sets to the public and for uh, general interest. So, uh, a last message is that in addition to uh, the Digital Euro program that was uh, uh, mentioned by Roberto uh, at the beginning in the introduction. There is also uh, a specifically dedicated uh, program in the uh, MFF, in the medium term budget of the EU, dedicated to statistics. It's under the single market program, and uh, we will have uh, important investments in revamping the technology for producing statistics, moving towards what we call trusted smart statistics. So uh, I hope that we will have a chance also to uh, discuss later on and answer some of your questions. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Emanuele, and sorry for the, uh, the technical problem. Uh, I do hope this uh, will, uh, will not uh, happen anymore. Uh, so thanks for, for your really inspiring uh, uh, speech. Uh, we have discussed about the, uh, the aspect related to the 
statistics as, as uh, high value uh, data set and which are the how the, this this world is moving towards what you uh, said the, towards the trusted smart statistics. It's important in your speech that every the different sort from uh, the uh, society has to be uh, considered to put uh, uh, all together. Uh, so analyzing different uh, uh, new business model. So looking at uh, uh, government to business and vice versa, but also citizen to business uh, and, and vice versa. With this respect, it's important now to, uh, let's say, uh, touch the, the, the ground uh, in the looking at the, uh, the people, at the citizen at the local level. So I will pass now uh, the floor uh, to the next uh, uh, to the next speaker uh, so it's uh, a pleasure for me uh, introduce you to uh, Andrea Almos uh, she is a policy officer at the uh, European Commission the G Connect unit uh, C3 technology for uh, smart community uh, she is uh, currently active focus helping cities and community uh, to better harness data and artificial uh, in uh, intelligence, in particular to meet their uh, environmental and climate ob objective. Andrea previously has worked uh, over a decade in the area of the digital government, so uh, uh, her background uh, is uh, uh, definitely uh, around public sector and local community. Thanks a lot, Andrea. I will share uh, your uh, slide. Hopefully, this will uh, work properly now. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, for inviting uh, me and for putting actually the the possibilities uh, that the high value data sets can offer in smart cities and communities on the agenda. Because it's really uh, to understand how the different kind of um, data sets coming from all kinds of different sources can indeed um, create a, a, a valuable uh, data ecosystem that smart cities uh, can benefit from for all kinds of applications uh, and for their daily uh, uh, city management as well as interactions with their citizens. So what I wanted to just uh, go through a few slides and tell you about is how we see uh, the uh, creation of this data ecosystem and how the, some of these most relevant high value data sets could be relevant uh, for smart cities and communities. And here I refer to all kinds of uh, cities in, in Europe. So if you show the next slide, the, the uh, policy context for where, we, where we're starting from is, as already mentioned, of course, the digital strategy and the, also beyond that, the whole data strategy and the strategy for AI. But also in the context of smart cities, the EU Green Deal, which envisages, uh, of course, uh, to create a better and more environmentally friendly and, and climate neutral uh, environment. And we believe that actually smart cities are uh, the, the potential spaces or places where this digital twin and green transition can meet. And if you have seen the recent strategies from, from the digital uh, policy area, they all also explain explore how this can be done, how we can have a better living environment with the use of digital. Also, if you look at the funding um, um, aspirations and the, the kind of recovery uh, plans, uh, the, the ambition is to have at least 37% uh, spent on uh, digital and some uh, and um, sorry on on green and 20% on digital so the two can be combined together and we see that uh, smart cities could be a potential uh, area where this can actually manifest the way we actually work with smart cities and communities in europe is through something called the living in eu uh, community. So if you show me the next slide is where we bring all this together and try to implement it on the ground is a group of uh, like-minded uh, cities, communities, other levels of government, as well as supporting organizations, companies, research and technology organizations. Can you just show the next slide, please? So in, you will see that um, starting from a bottom-up initiative and, and supported by a number of organizations such as the Open and Agile Smart Cities and Communities, Euro Cities, um, but also 
uh, others such as Committee of the Regions and the European Commission pulled together, put together a, a draft, a declaration or drafted a declaration that have now has now been signed by uh, uh, quite a large number of cities and communities and supporters that commit themselves to a set of principles for the digital transformation uh, of these local administrations, uh, the European way, and uh, put uh, forward a number of principles on how, for example, data should be handled uh, in an ethical, fair way, but also in a way that can create um, uh, as I said, uh, uh, let's say European, uh, uh, support European values can create value for all those in the data value chain, but also ensure the respect of citizens' digital rights. So you'll hear about this living in EU community further, but we work with them uh, together on a different, uh, on a number of different initiatives uh, and, and commitments on, on technical and other aspects. So if you show me the next slide, Basically, what we're trying to do, uh, and as I said, with this core group of, of like-minded uh, stakeholders across the EU, is to help uh, the creation or the increase of digital capacity and the uh, helping the local administrations to go through their digital transformation through a number of concrete uh, areas in order to create the enabling digital, I would call it infrastructure or key enablers um, that will help uh, to, to go to the next level of digitization of these local environments. Beyond, of course, having the right connectivity and infrastructure, we're focusing on the data layer, uh, interoperability of platforms, and a number of key uh, core application areas. And of course, we, we will take uh, advantage of some of those uh, enabling and supporting infrastructures, such as the AI testing and experimentation facilities, for example, for smart communities, but also the European the network of European digital innovation hubs. And we will have a number of in, uh, supporting programs, in particular, the Digital Europe programs. If I go into the detail of each of those, if you show me the next slide, in terms of data, so as mentioned earlier, the data strategy foresees the creation of a number of data spaces. And you will have seen that, for example, there is an, an initiative to create the Green Deal data space, but I could also talk about the mobility data space or energy or the public sector data spaces. Many of these will have an, an uh, important elements that will be uh, relevant for uh, the smart city and community um, area. So what we're trying to uh, actually do is to create a dedicated smart cities uh, and communities data space that will benefit from the other data spaces, but also uh, create its own governance mechanism, uh, its own terms and conditions on how one could join these data spaces under what condition uh, access and reuse of the, uh, the available data uh, would be enabled. And of course, there are many different data sources in a smart city uh, context coming either from, uh, from the administration itself or coming from uh, internet of things and sensors and citizens and so on. But of course, also we're looking at whether and how some of the most relevant high value data sets could also be part of the data sources used and, and uh, be part of this data space for what we call climate neutral and smart communities. So if you show me the next slide, here is a quick uh, overview on why we think that a dedicated data space is important. It's because it's a cross-cutting area. As I said, it taps into many of the different sectoral data spaces. We will somehow uh, be a subset of the Green Deal data space, but in, in, in reality, it can tap into many of the other data spaces. Uh, because for uh, managing a city, we will, of course, uh, have to ensure that, that the administration can, and then the, the companies that may want to create innovative services on top of those, can get access to, and in particular, can create cross-sectoral data usages that will indeed help both innovative services and also better decision uh, supporting tools for cities themselves. So we know that most of the data uh, is not necessarily open in the public. We know that, as uh, also Manuel mentioned, there's difficulties in accessing business to business data uh, or even citizen data and so on. So the uh, rationale for having a dedicated data space where relevant stakeholders come together and agree on a set of conditions or the governance uh, and the architecture on how this data can be shared at that EU level, we believe that can be very powerful and especially because we know that only a small part of data or small percentage of data is actually open and a small percentage of data is actually used by cities. 
So if you show me the next slide, indeed, we see that apart from the many different data sources, which may be, of course, geospatial data, BIM data, but many others, high value data sets can be relevant. So from those that were mentioned earlier from the main categories, certainly we believe that geospatial data is key because many of the services will have a location uh, element, or for example, when we're looking into the next um, stage of uh, smart city management, such as the, through the use of local digital twins, the maps, um, postcodes, location information will be extremely important. In addition to that, of course, earth observation or environmental data and meteorological data, which could be very relevant if uh, available at such a uh, level of granularity. And also, as mentioned earlier, statistical data, uh, which could also be or should also be available for, as regards local uh, statistical data, but also mobility data, which is oftentimes the very first uh, kind of uh, service in order to render a, a smart city more uh, carbon neutral and more environmentally sustainable. What we're also looking at is some of these high value data sets coming from other types of public organizations, which again um, enriches the set of data uh, that could be part of this data space. If you show me the next slide, as I said, data was a major element and we see that high value data sets will be an important part of this data space for smart cities. Um, and what the next, uh, let's say, level of the, uh, support will help cities to actually have the right uh, platforms to manage all this data already at their city local data ecosystem, but also to be able to create this European common European data space on how to actually uh, link up the different uh, local platforms. And the way we started is to help cities procure and implement uh, interoperable standard-based um, platforms. And these standards have been actually agreed and are part of that declaration that I have mentioned earlier, the Living in EU declaration and very much focus or, or are built on the so-called minimum interoperability mechanism that you may hear about later today as well. So the idea is to help cities have um, standard-based uh, interoperable platforms that enable them to build on and will not be locked into certain technological solutions. And once you go beyond the platforms and we will be helping cities, and if you show me the next slide, put in place, uh, as I said, um, powerful decision-making tools in particular through the help of AI-enabled local digital twins. And you will have heard about digital twins in other uh, sectors such as manufacturing or destination earth or construction sector, but certainly cities are also exploring the potential of these digital twins on how to make better informed decisions, both operational decisions. So on the short term, for example, better manage their traffic um, uh, or, or, uh, or energy consumption, but also uh, help them make more longer term strategic decisions and create different scenarios using models to be able to actually benefit from all that data that can be used uh, for these uh, uh, informed decisions and then using these technologies to uh, provide uh, uh, better visualization and better scenario uh, scenario play, uh, planning uh, for the cities themselves. So if you're looking at the next slide, uh, we believe that for municipalities, many of the high value data sets will be very important, both in terms of their public service delivery, so just a few examples on how to get permits for building the school, how to help start up a business or report a crime or, or change a school, but also if you show me the next slide, how they can help creation of, of useful um, data-driven services at local level. Uh, here are some, for example, uh, examples from the AI Watch uh, study or from the Synchronicity pilot, uh, large-scale pilot on enlarged project or the Smarter Together. Many of these uh, data-enabled services could and will eventually benefit from the high-value data sets used at local level. And as I said, the last example is the set of digital twins that we already see across the EU through in a number of European cities, but also experimented through a number of European projects like Duet, Lead, or Sphere. And we're actually mapping uh, uh, the, the, the existence of these uh, uh, twins and trying to understand how to roll out on a larger scale, uh, at least the basic enablers for these local digital twins. I think there is one more slide to show on how exactly uh, we're going to fund it. So the next steps will be that I think we need to have even more use cases on how high value data sets can concretely help at local level. 
Then we're trying to put in place these local data platforms that will be minimum interoperability mechanism and MIM plus uh, compliant interoperable platforms. Uh, we will also help uh, to create this data space, this data ecosystem that can reuse some of the building blocks that were already mentioned, and I know that the CEF projects are actively reusing them, but then also how to create capacity and actually a, a generic toolbox in order to be able to roll out uh, the components, generic components of local digital twins across the EU. And what you will see is that uh, these ambitions uh, and the continuous managing and governance of the living in EU community will be supported through the Digital Europe program. So here you will see an invitation to the uh, to a, an event that takes place on the sec first and second of June. And the second of June, we will have an info session on all these funding opportunities for smart cities and communities. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, uh, Andrea, for this uh inspiring uh, speech uh, several points have been uh, touched uh, in your in your presentation in particular i would like to um i like some some point you talked about you talked about uh, uh, the cross sector service so the reuse of uh, of private data this uh, is in link with uh, what uh, already presented by uh, Manuela with the new new models including a B2G, G2B and also uh, uh, C2B and C2G aspect. Uh, using citizen data as a public asset, but at the same time uh, be sure that uh, uh, assuring a citizen digital, digital rights. So it's uh, the privacy preserving aspect also touched by uh, Emanuele. Uh, for sure, there are a lot of room for improvement since uh, only uh, the 12 percent of city data is used for decision making. But uh, so a, a lot already a lot has been done, but a, a lot more is uh, is needed. Now we, we go in the section where the, the project uh, free project funded under the European uh, the connecting uh, Europe facilities. Uh, uh, so, and in this section uh, are funded, and in, in this section we are going to learn how these projects are dealing with all the uh, the topic uh, we have uh, discussed in the in the previous part of the session. I would give the floor first to uh, my colleague Martino Maggio uh, that will introduce what. Uh, uh, he has been doing uh, at the moment uh, with uh, uh, within uh, Interstat project that is specifically uh, focused on uh, statistical uh, statistics um, data. Hello, hello, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Roberto, for this opportunity. As you as you said, I'm. Uh, uh, I am Martino Maggio, I work for engineering, so I'm a colleague of Roberto, Engineering Engineering Informatica, that is the largest IT company in Italy. And in particular, I work in the research and development laboratory, focusing on the specific research on uh, innovation on public services, and also in the field, for example, uh, of the smart cities, and uh, in this case, also open data. Today I'm going to, to talk about this, this project, that is Interstat project in which uh, I'm involved as coordinator, engineer is coordinating this project, uh, that is focused on the open statistical data. So it's uh, a topic that was uh, already, already introduced. Next slide, please. Yes, so um, as was already explained, so I don't want to, to, uh, to spend uh, a lot of time on this, uh, statistical data are very uh, important and uh, are in, in the, their role is uh, increasingly uh, in importance in the last year due to their role in the uh, policy making and in the impact on the social and economic and the, all, the, all the, the aspects of the everyday life. And as was mentioned, are also specifically part 
of the A value data set as defined in the open data directive. So the statistical data statistics are uh, uh, listed among the categories of this high value data set. So uh, in the Interstat project uh, is considering the, the, the importance of, of this uh, topology of data, is focusing specifically on the interoperability uh, between uh, um, of statistical data between different countries and between different institutions in Europe. And um, it's the interoperability is always an essential uh, uh, topic in order to make data open, reusable, and available to all the different stakeholders that can include scientific communities, citizens, but also administration and private companies. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, uh, which is the, um, the, the overall um, um, objective of the Intersat project? That, uh, first of all, as was mentioned, uh, is a project founded under the uh, CEF Telecom Call of 2019. It was starting in uh, September 2020 and will last three years. In this project, that has as a main objective the development of a framework that will allow interoperability, uh, reusing and, and, and designing also new technical assets, but also common ontology, so a technical and a semantic interoperability between national statistical portals and also the European data portal that is uh, an important asset uh, for the reuse and the collection of open data across Europe. Um, this project is composed by a consortium of, of four, four stakeholders. Engineering, as I said, is the coordinator, but we have also the Fireware Foundation. It is a foundation that promotes open software and open standards uh, in the field of smart city and uh, in general smart uh, uh, and uh, next generation of services. And then we have two data providers in this, uh, uh, that are the two public institutions. We have INSE and ISTAT, that are the French and the Italian uh, national institution for uh, statistical data, respectively. Next one, please. Uh, this slide show which are the most specific objectives of, of, the, of the project. As I said, Interstat is a technical project, so the most of the objective are from technical point of view. And um, as I said, the, the, the main one is to enable this interoperability between the different national statistical portal in Europe and the European data portal. So to create this interaction, the possibility to share in a very easy way data through the open data portal and, and to make also statistical data more simple to, to search and to be used. Provide also in, in this context a new standard methodology to achieve data harmonization from the point of view of the metadata, but also from the data content. And this uh, uh, and 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 this uh, interoperability will be provided also through the provisioning of technical interface and the API and the reuse of the self contest broker building block that is one of the as was also mentioned before, one of the building blocks promoted by uh, the, CEF, the CEF initiative as open software uh, to build uh, also application in the, in the, in the field of uh, public, public services. Also, and also, we want to provide tools to simplify statistical uh, data visualization and analysis for the end user, that this is another uh, uh, important point uh, to foster the reuse and the simplification of, of the data. And, and finally, this will be validated through uh, the deployment and piloting of cross-border services that uh, will be um, piloted to validate, validate the result of the project. Next one, please. So bef before I, um, I introduce the, the, the fact that uh, Interstat is also promoting and reusing some key standards uh, because this is the objective, is not to reinvent the wheel, but to reuse and foster what in Europe is already provided in terms of standards in the field of statistical domain, open data uh, domain, and in general uh, on, the, on the data sharing. So one of the challenge is to create interoperability and reuse, reusing three key standards uh, in particular, one is the SDMX, that is a um, statistical data and metadata exchange, is a standard to exchange data and also to represent data in the field of uh, statistics. So it's very specific for statistical data. 
but we want also to make this in, completely interoperable with the, um, the DCAT AP, that is the application profile that we use uh, in, in Europe to represent metadata for open, da open data set in, in, in the open data portals in Europe and also in, in European data portal. And at the same time, uh, reusing the contest broker, uh, the self contest broker, we want to reuse the standard that is on top of the contest broker that is the uh, now uh, from since a couple of years, uh, uh, Etsy standard that is the NGSILD uh, contest information management API that allow users to provide consumer and subscribe contest information. So we also uh, bring. Uh, the concept of the contest information and also, oh, for example, real-time information together, the statistical world that is more related to uh, often to historical and aggregated data. Martino, one minute. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So you can go. Uh, this is simply, I don't want to enter in the details, simply to say that we are using some key asset, as I mentioned, at the self-contest broad other assets that come from uh, the statistical world. And we also uh, have the, uh, the reuse of uh, an open source platform uh, developed by engineering that is called Hydra, that is um, able to federate open data from different sources. This only to say that we are going to provide this, this framework and providing API uh, to be uh, exposed for external institution, external stakeholders. Next one, please. Yes, these are the pilots that we want to, uh, um, at least the basic pilot that we want to uh, test in our project. And one is uh, are dedicated to different sex. So one is more dedicated uh, to the, for example, um, to su support to choose the right school based on the information that we have uh, on 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 from statistical from statistical. Uh, uh, institution related to census and to and to other um, important um, information. We have also service based on the reuse uh, of geolocalized facilities information that can be used to also for important, um, uh, for example, policy making. And uh, another one is more dedicated on the environment policy, so to um, to reuse information about uh, environment to support policy making. Last slide. I think, yes, this is simply to say that in our project, as in, in, in every project, we are dealing with barriers and challenges that we want to, in order to overcome these, barrier, these barriers, uh, we have in the field of data, open data, uh, uh, still uh, different barriers. Um, here are simply three, three main barriers related, for example, to lack of interoperability and standardization that uh, uh, still uh, prevent the, in the, um, the reuse of data, but also the difficulties in the adoption of full linked open data approach. I didn't mention that the project is focused on specifically on statistical data, but also on linked open statistical data, so the approach of linked data. And still few real and added value business application that we use uh, this type of data. So Intersat is going to provide with this framework some solution to foster and simplify and overcome all these, all these uh, barriers. I think that this is should be the last uh, last slide. Yes. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, here are listed the also the information about the the Intersat website, uh, and uh, if you need information, don't hesitate to contact uh, me or the the official website. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, now we are moving a little. We do a switch. Uh, in order to uh, keep the, the, the control of the screen still on my side. So I will give the floor first to, uh, to, the, to Yoda project, and then we will move to, to uh, Odala. Uh, just a moment. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much, Roberto, for the introduction. Uh, your Alvaro, Alvaro is professor at uh, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. Please. Uh... Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. 
So, yeah, Roberto has introduced. My name is Alba Alonso, professor at the Universidad Politécnica de Madrid. That is the, the main technical university in Madrid, Spain. Um, and today I'm here for, uh, yeah, briefly introducing uh, Joda project. That is another um, project under the umbrella of this set of projects uh, funded by the uh, Theft Telecom program. So please, next slide, Roberto. Thank you. This is uh, just um, an introduction of the research group where, where we are working at the university. Um, we are coordinating this JODA project from the new Internet Generation Group, that is a, a research group in which uh, we mainly uh, do research projects related with real-time communications and web-based video conferencing systems. We are also um, we are also working on e-learning platforms, developing several MOOCs and developing tools for helping the, the development of these uh, massive uh, courses. And we are also from the uh, research group, and this is the, the part uh, that uh, is related with this project, Joda. We are also very involved in Fiverr Initiative that you know is a European um, frame that Fiverr provides uh, a framework of uh, open source components in order to manage context information data, um, in order to process this data, to introduce security and identity management in this, uh, in this scope. And specifically, we, from, from our research group, we are, um, we are the owners of uh, several generic enablers that are the open source software components um, aimed to solve these uh, issues I have just mentioned. And specifically, we are owning uh, components related with uh, identity and access, and access control management, with uh, data processing and data ingestion. And I will, will enter in details about this later. We are also um, holding two seats in the FIWAR Technical Steering Committee, where decisions about FIWAR roadmap and so on are taken. And I think we think this is very relevant for the for the project. So please, next slide. Yeah, I assume this is uh, something that is not new for you. Uh, the Joda project is under the umbrella of this uh, Theft Telecom uh, program. Uh, with the main objective of promoting the use of open data, uh, specifically, I mean, in this, in this chapter of public open data, promoting the use of this uh, data and the uh, control or in the central point of this data.europe.eu uh, portal. So, uh, specifically about Yoda, in this slide, you can see that uh, the main objective of this Yoda uh, project, your open data project, is to provide a set of um, uh, entry points for consuming useful data to European citizens. So we are developing a service for final users uh, that will be accessible through a web uh, service and also from mobile applications in order to uh, easy the access to uh, relevant data for the daily life of European citizens. So, as you know, one of the problems that has been previously um, several times commented in, in this session is that we have a, a, a huge amount of public open data, uh, but uh, in many cases, this data is not accessible for uh, final users because they don't know the way of consuming, how to consume this data. They don't know if the uh, data has uh, the needed quality, if the data is um, has been periodically updated and have the, the latest information and so on. So what we aim basically with this project is to uh, provide a, um, a, 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 a way to offering this data uh, to citizens in a way that uh, they can consume them uh, easily and uh, previously process in order to offer the high value quality data and also the um, updated data. So in these applications, they will be able to configure a set of widgets for consuming uh, data 
that is useful for the daily life, like for instance, traffic information, weather, accessibility, urban mobility related data, and so on. For doing this, we are going to consume data directly from uh, the European Data Portal or for the new portal presently created as a merge of the different portals, including the European Data Portal. And we are also going to enrich the um, available data in, the, in this portal uh, through the um, publication of uh, other new data sources like the ones you can see here in this slide. So we are going to publish data about the smart campus we have deployed at, uni, at our university in Madrid. We are also going to publish data about the uh, Spanish uh, methodology agency, that is the IMET agency. And we are also going to uh, publish data from two um, important smart cities deployed also here in Spain. That is the Santander smart city, the north of Spain, and also Malaga smart city and the south of Spain. Both of them are currently using fiber-based uh, infrastructure in the smart city, so it will be easy to using the different components we are going to develop uh, in the project to uh, connect these uh, data sources to, to the uh, European portals. Here you can see also the uh, web page of the project in order to check technical information and, and so on. And also in the next slide, you can see the consortium of this project. As I said before, it's coordinated by us, by the Universidad Politecnica, Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. And we also count in the consortium with the um, uh, work of the University of Cantabria that are managing part of this smart city deployment in Santander. Also with the ethics group that is a legal company that is uh, supervising all the things we do with data in terms of data privacy and so on. And also we come with the company, the startup Urban, that is established in Malaga, is in charge of the of developing uh, imple and implementing the the service, the final uh, users services, and that uh, has also uh, this company um, very very close to contact with uh, the people managing the Malaga Smart City. A part of the members of the consortium, we are supported by the uh, agency, uh, meteorology agency from the City Council of Santander and also the City Council of Malaga through the technical department that is called CEMI. And we have also the support of Fiber Foundation um, because as you know, we are using several Fiber components in this project. So Fiber is directly supporting us. Uh, yeah, just to finish, in the next slide, you can see the main challenges of our project. First of all, as, as, as I commented before, we have a, a, a huge amount of data from heterogeneous data sources. So we are going to use several fiber connectors based on Draco genetic enabler in order to ingest data from um, data sources that, exposes, that expose data from sensors directly in real time, also from external open data portals from the uh, cities, uh, and also from other sources like, for instance, REST APIs. We are um, going to um, use NGSI standard. Sorry, there is a typo there. Uh, and also fiber smart data models in order to standardize the different data models we are, we are using. In order to get data from the real-time data sources, we are going to, of course, use the context broker component that, as you know, and has been commented previously in this session, is also a Ceph building block. And also, we are going to develop a set of machine learning components in order to, um, in order to um, get data, for instance, from uh, traffic or from um, parking uh, sensors in the cities and to uh, learn several models in order to offer predictions to users uh, and to let them, to, to citizens, and to let them to configure some predictions about the, the next days in the application. The last challenge is related with data privacy and sovereignty. And here we are also going to rely on firewall components that we are uh, going to evolve and to uh, um, generate new releases under the scope of the project 
in order to provide um, access control, but not only access control, also data usage control that uh, talks about uh, not only uh, what uh, data consumers can uh, access, which they, specific data um, citizens can access, but also what data consumers can do with the data in terms of data processing. So we have developed, we are developing a data usage control framework that continuously analyze the processing that is do, uh, being done, done with data in order to continuously check if the, um, if the, the processing is, um, is, um, is feasible or is enabled or available according to a previously defined uh, policies, data usage policies. So this is more or less the, the main objectives of the projects. Of course, of the project, of course, you can check the website in order to get more information. And also, you have here in the in the final slide my contact. So you can, of course, send uh, an email to me, and we can establish contact in case you have any question or, or any uh, any idea in, in your mind for collaborating with us. So many thanks for your attention, and yeah, I'm open to to solve any. Any doubt. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Salvador, for this uh, for this presentation. Uh, it's clear that uh, uh, in terms of uh, technical aspect, you are introducing uh, uh, the um, element related to privacy management uh, and data sovereignty uh, in, uh, in respect of what was presented before on uh, on Interstat that was more related on how to. Uh, make uh, a, a better use of uh, statistical data uh, for uh, uh, use in, uh, in smart cities uh, domain. Uh, now uh, we are passing the floor to the last, last project that is uh, Odala, and it will, be, it will be presented by Davor Misman, that is uh, the Chief uh, Executive Officer at uh, OASC, Open Agile Smart Cities. Uh, so now, Davor, please, uh, the floor is uh, yours. Thank you, uh, Roberto, and uh, uh, thanks everybody for uh, uh, joining. It was a uh, really interesting um, uh, listening to the uh, previous speakers. I, I think um, you know. So, so what I'll do in the presentation is I'll, I'll provide some context on um, uh, the Open Data Lakes project, and then uh, maybe some complementary uh, perspectives on uh, kind of where we sit as OASC and how we try to. Um, helps spur forward uh, the, um, the 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 field mostly from the demand side on um, you know uh, uh, local uh, data usage let's say and and uh, related uh, capabilities. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll start with um, the Odala uh, project. Uh, so Odala stands for Open Data Lakes. It's a, a Ceph Telecom project like uh, the the previous ones. Uh, so essentially, what it tries to do is improve. Uh, data management and uh, flows in uh, cities with a data lake uh, infrastructure using open European uh, standards, open source as well. Uh, and of course, also um, um, like the other projects, um, uh, testing, implementing a Ceph context broker and then kind of also uh, related, uh, other related uh, MIMS, as you uh, might know, the, uh, the Ceph context broker specification and uh, the OSC MIM1 are uh, one and the same. Um, and uh, of which then uh, uh, there are several fireware uh, implementations, which is also what we're using uh, in the project. Um, so we have like this multi-federated uh, federated, um, uh, uh, multi-broker uh, setups and so forth. So it's, it's quite a technical challenge. Uh, luckily we have, uh, well, so we have some great cities uh, and, and also I, I think very skilled and, and um, uh, well, wonderful technical partners to work with. We have uh, the city of Kiel as coordinators. We also have uh, Cartagena, uh, Saint Quentin, and Heidelberg as cities. Then um, we have kind of the whole group uh, from uh, Flanders who has been really uh, pushing the um, uh, the mark when it comes to uh, you know the the use of um, uh, self building blocks in kind of national and city infrastructures uh, in Flanders. So that's uh, the Flemish government. Uh, and then um, uh, the Hippolis, they are now exiting the project and being uh, replaced by another partner. Uh, but um, uh, IMEC is also uh, there. And then uh, we have Fogur Numeric, the Fireware Foundation and OASC, who are in a very uh, complementary role, let's say, uh, advancing the same mission from supply and demand side 
uh, together uh, uh, in, in certain contexts. And then we have uh, a number of companies like um, uh, uh, NEC, Contrast, Exilus, um, Veracity, and Hop, uh, Ubiquitous, uh, all contributing to this kind of um, uh, shared vision. Uh, the, the ambition within the project is, well, of course, what is written in the project, but at least from where uh, I stand, where we stand as OSC, we're trying to, um, and, and I thank uh, and commend also uh, Martino's effort to, uh, you know, um, uh, set up a, a really fruitful and useful, I think, um, uh, linking and, and conversation between uh, the, the, the CEF projects that are currently running. Uh, we're do what we're also looking at is how we can even further uh, bridge, you know, uh, outside of CEF, because I think what we see is that, um, it's uh, bursting at the seams, I think, uh, the, um, uh, the kind of uh, adoption rates uh, the, um, uh, of uh, the context broker. So I think it's really great news for, uh, uh, you know, both supply and demand side who, who have been investing in this. So uh, we, we're trying to do our uh, part there. Um, so why uh, the focus on, on data lakes? Well, you have the decentralized storage there of all the, the city data, uh, where you're trying to uh, break down uh, different um, uh, data silos and then uh, enable um, uh, these types of new breed of products that can um, uh, deliver uh, on top of that kind of integrated uh, capability. And then, of course, once you have that uh, set up, uh, well, there, there's the, the opportunity or the um, uh, uh, yeah the, uh, the 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 space, let's say, uh, the the capability to uh, link uh, other uh, kind of data sources uh, from the ecosystem. Uh, what, what are the, the data sources that we focus on or, or what's the high value data that we work with? Uh, we have uh, mobility data sets, we have kind of environment uh, data sets, including water, things like that, and also uh, uh, data from utilities. Uh, so what we're trying to do then is um, uh, link that up. It's, it's some logos there, but it's a, it's a broader context. Uh, so we're trying to link that up, um, of course, within the context of the Living in EU uh, initiative, which is kind of paving the way for the, um, the standards oriented uh, local digital transformation. Uh, so we're, we're um, um, you know, involved in the, the tech uh, working group there, but also kind of the, the flanking initiatives with uh, well, all these units from the commission, but also, also let's say the, the network partners there really looking at, okay, how do we now kind of create these pivots in terms of um, uh, scale uh, of adoption. I think that's that's a really big one. Uh, go beyond, you know, pilots, large scale pilots to, to actual kind of societal scale, uh, let's say adoption. Uh, uh, important to, I think, mention here is also the initiatives coming from DG Grow, which are quite well aligned, I think. Um, uh, is uh, the, the living, uh, sorry, the, um, the 100 Intelligent Cities Challenge. And it's kind of um, a spin out uh, tech for good marketplace which is uh, being run uh, uh, on the same logic also of interoperability, but then with a, with a specific focus on kind of four good uh, technologies. I think that there's gonna be a lot uh, to see in that space in, in the coming years. Um, you know, talking about uh, for good initiatives and things like that, I think, you know, in these projects, uh, the, the, the challenges are like, you know, the, getting uh, uh, the data flowing, uh, making sure stuff is interoperable. Uh, how do you then, uh, if you, you know, kind of govern it in project, but also set it up for sustainability post project. Uh, but you know, it's it's when we wrote the proposals and now we're running the projects, the world is a bit of a different uh, place. And I think we're we're all in this spot where where we're you know, of course, ho looking hopefully uh, towards the future and uh, looking at these encouraging uh, vaccination rates. But I think a lot of um, people, organizations. Um, uh, kind of uh, uh, well, uh, entity sides of the market and so forth have been doing stock taking and looking at okay, you know how how can we improve more and how can we improve faster on these kind of dimensions we think uh, are important. Uh, ultimately, I think we all face um, the same challenges, uh, the, the the real ones, uh, which is uh, uh, I, I think um, the stress test was there for a lot of the stuff we do, and I don't think we kind of entirely uh, delivered when it comes uh, to, to digital IoT uh, now, now in the pandemic. But I think, um, you know, on, on the other challenges, of course, there is a bit more time, <laughs> less urgency, but uh, of course, they're very important. And, uh, you know, apart from, you know, the list, and of course, it's uh, it's bigger than that. Um, I think the, the, the main observation is that, well, the challenges hit, uh, uh, everybody just as hard. I think the pandemic, you know, didn't discriminate 
climate change doesn't discriminate, doesn't care where you were born, how big the city is, what location it's in, and so forth. So it, it hits everybody just as hard on, on that local level. But then what happens after, of course, uh, is, 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 is quite different. So we've been working quite hard from our side on you know, developing a model where uh, everything that we do in terms of, you know, we, we can, we're in the standards <laughs> domain, but on, on, on the demand side. So what we've been really looking at and studying is how can we make stuff understandable? How can we make it practically valuable? Uh, how do we ensure that anyone, any community, you know, irrespective of the, the size of it uh, uh, can find not just you know the the means to to access it which is not also not always the case but where the different stakeholders in those communities find the logic to do it and, and then the ways to do it and so forth so we've been re really hard at work in, in kind of uh, getting that part right and i think that that's a, that's a role we can play that um, um, maybe others are, are less suited to but that delivers value i think uh, to, to the whole ecosystem. So I won't go over all the slides. I know we're- uh, Sorry, Davor, but uh, time is uh, now, uh, uh, we need to, to close this uh, this part. So yeah, please. okay, but I mean, I, I've been talking for what, six minutes or something. So I'll, I'll take a few more minutes if you don't mind. Uh, so so um, the um, uh, so the, the, the parts we've been kind of working hard at is uh, making sense of things in a level that is uh, usable by policy. And I, I think you need to make a full circle. The, the problems we run into in terms of interoperability, they stem from answering uh, policy goals. And I think um, uh, you kind of need to make full circle in the way you present the logic of uh, the technical work we do. So that's um, a reorientation we are doing uh, uh, internally, uh, or, or uh, uh, in fact, actually with the cities. So we, ha we have a, a general assembly coming up where uh, some of the stuff here will be um, uh, kind of validated, taken forward, and so forth. So I'd um, uh, like to um, uh, invite uh, also the people, uh, uh, you know, listening. I don't know exactly how much it is. That's Corona, I guess. Uh, to uh, you know, get engaged with these um, demand side um, uh, initiatives of okay, getting uh, the various aspects of uh, digital transformation, which goes beyond just the technical part, uh, um, uh, getting that right and get involved. Uh, with the MIM, so I've made a very, very uh, hasty kind of uh, downslope there to fi uh, finish on time, but uh, feel free to reach out and um, yeah, we'll be there. You'll hear uh, more from us in the coming time. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Tamar, for for uh, this uh, uh, this presentation. That, uh, by the way, it's a clear link with what we have discussed uh, during the project uh, section. Uh, and uh, this put together with what was presented in the first part, in particular uh, in the in the last uh, 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 keynote speech from uh, from Andrea, with a clear link on local communities and uh, and smart cities. Now we are opening the floor for the Q and A part, and uh, I would ask all the speakers to switch on the camera. Uh, first, I will introduce this this section, uh, in particular with the. Uh, uh, a specific uh, a question to the to Stefano De Pamphilis, uh, that is uh, the ch uh, chief operation officer at uh, European at uh, sorry at uh, Fiverr Foundation, uh, because uh, Fiverr technology was uh, mentioned in all the projects. Uh, it's uh, a key asset. Uh, the context program is a key asset uh, uh, in the connecting uh, Europe facilities. So it's uh, one of the building block. Uh, so I would ask him uh, uh, some uh, uh, some comment from his side uh, in terms of uh, because we, we have discussed that one uh, one specific topic is to put to together uh, different uh, different data for different sources. We also talks about the new statistics where it's important to include uh, uh, more real time information. So. Uh, please, Stefano, could you comment a little bit on this, on this from Fiverr perspective? You are mute. Okay, good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Roberto, for the invitation. And, um, uh, also, I would like to thank very much the speakers because the presentations were, were great and, uh, and many topics were very well address. So, yeah, I would like to start uh, my reflection with one minute, eh? no more. Uh, quoting the Open Data Directive, 
Because the Open Data Directives, uh, at Article 5.5, 5, say something really very uh, core for us. So it says that public sector bodies shall make dynamic data available for reuse immediately after collection via stable APIs and where relevant as a bulk download. So this is exactly what Fiverr is about. At least the core technology of Fiverr is about, which is as cited here uh, several times during this uh, session today, is the, uh, the context broker, which not only uh, the, 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 it implements uh, uh, standard, well, it was a sort of a virtual, virtual circle, the, the, the creation of the standard and the implementation of the standard uh, together, uh, and the standards is NGSILD but also <clears throat> the involvement as uh, one of the building blocks uh, of the European Commission under the self initiative. So I think everything is around this. And um, uh, so what we heard today is, uh, is exactly that. So the need and the, the way and how to um, benefit from, from uh, this uh, and how to make uh, things uh, in the end even interpretable and create value on top of. Because th this is, uh, at the end of the day, what is uh, crucial. So we have many different sources of information in many different places, many different areas. There is a clear need to create value out of those. And the data set per se doesn't have a value if the value is not uh, recognized according to, to its use. And I think this is the, the, the important because uh, fact that we have to do. And the other element <clears throat> that I think was also highlighted today, which I would like to stress even more, is the need for standardization. I think <clears throat> this is a topic also of other sessions here at the Data Week. <clears throat> but the need of standardization, in particular when uh, you uh, data and when describing data, is, is also important. And uh, the initiative that has been mentioned uh, by, by Professor Alvaro, but also by, by uh, Davor, that is the, <clears throat> this, uh, the, which is the meme, that is the data, the data models and the, and the standardization of data through that is, is clearly a, an important step. Because only when people is really using the same way of describing data, then the data can be reused. Otherwise, it's always a, a, it's a nightmare, as we all know. And in this, an additional effort that we are doing as Fire Foundation is um, the participation is in other standardization body, in addition to Etsy, where, where also we started a task force on uh, a, a devolution on GSILD towards, uh, towards um, digital twins is also the participation in the IEEE uh, committee for the standardization of the data trading system, which is a standard which will appear <clears throat> in a year or so, which is exactly about putting this. And uh, I am there in this committee, bringing uh, the, the voice of European researchers and, and, and works on that. So in a nutshell, this is what I would like to share with you with this uh, and in answering your question. Thanks a lot, because this was one, uh, one of the questions we also have in mind, the, part, the importance of, uh, of standardization. Uh, well, before uh, asking, uh, uh, giving the floor to, uh, to Vega, I would just uh, uh, put uh, here a comment because uh, somehow in the high value data set, it, what is important to have to achieve the impact is also a matter of uh, uh, awareness. So create the, re the real awareness, the real to be to have uh, not just the citizen, but also all the public sector conscious about the potentiality of this, uh, uh, of the high value data sets. So giving example, giving a, a good, good stories to tell and I think both the limiting.eu is going in the, exactly in that direction. So giving the right awareness, even using uh, instruments like AI on, or digital twin that could be an instrument for create the right awareness because it's clear, clearly show the potentiality behind the use of data. 
But also, I think uh, this is what is going on, uh, in the direction where Eurostat is going, uh, because I know that in, the, in one week time, there will be uh, a specific uh, uh, event on data from and for society that wants to create uh, exactly a sort of awareness uh, for uh, the government uh, part towards the, the impact that this data could have locally. Is, is it correct? Uh, um, Emanuele? Yes, absolutely. The topic, as you said, will be uh, about creating uh, uh, ecosystems that are putting together uh, the users, the reusers, uh, and the producers of data. And uh, just uh, to stress uh, what Stefano said before, that uh, one element of the discussion will be the uh, harmonization and automation of these processes. Thanks. Andrea, I don't know if you want to continue, uh, let's say, uh, linking something from uh, uh, livingin.eu or uh, everything was already uh, more or less uh, presented. Just to complement what you have said, indeed, that if uh, those uh, parties that have signed or, or uh, subscribed to the to the um, principles of this community will have the opportunity to also uh, explore and share good practice, in particular on uh, local digital twins, which we think as, as an ultimate way to demonstrate the usefulness of all kinds of data, but also specifically high value data sets. So we're inviting uh, parties to get in touch with us, have a look at the declaration and see how they can engage. And here you will also see the link to the um, uh, info day, the info session that we will have on the funding opportunity. Thanks. Vega? Is there okay. Uh, thanks, Roberto. Uh, there, is, uh, there are two, two questions on the Zoom chat that uh, they are answered by the participants, but maybe all the people know to, to answer what is the, the question. Uh, the first question is for, uh, is for Frances Francesco, that it uh, said, uh, is this study, uh, is this a study openly av available? Uh, there is any link for, for this study? Uh, so the study, uh, the re final report is not yet finally, uh, is not uh, yet uh, available, but uh, it will be very soon. I think uh, in a couple of weeks. I need, uh, I need to check with my team, but it's gonna be open very soon. Okay, thanks, Francesco. Um, the, the second one is uh, to Alvaro. That uh, are you using any HPC system for machine learning algorithm for providing real time data? Yes, the 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 main idea we are we are just starting this uh, task under the project, and the main idea is to reuse again a fiber component like Cosmos. But uh, as we are also yeah involved in the development, we will also. Uh, explore the possibility of, of evolving this component in order to support the new things we, we will develop. So. Okay, thank you very much, Alvaro. Uh, I encourage uh, all the people to, to ask uh, something in the question and answer uh, in Google or in Zoom. But uh, by the moment, we can continue uh, talking about, for example, uh, the living, living you um, and uh, for example, Andrea, how the digital innovation hub hubs uh, can uh, contribute to the living you, or how can collaborate uh, uh, in the, uh, fostering uh, the access to public data sets. We have been working with digital innovation hubs for over a, a year now in the context of, of course, as you know, the, the new uh, funding program, digital innovation hubs will have additional funding to increase their capacity to also help public administration. So we worked with a group of those. We organized a number of events to actually explore what hubs would have to do, what would their uh, service offerings be when working, for example, with smart cities. And so what we now need to see is, you know, which hubs will actually be funded under Digital Europe, which will, which will be um, part of the network of the European Digital Innovation Hubs. And then once we see that, we will understand which ones also have an affinity for, for uh, public uh, administration's work. But we definitely see the, those as an opportunity uh, to um, 
bring the, the knowledge, bring the, uh, the possibility to test and experiment uh, with, uh, with the data sets uh, at local level. So we're already thinking of how exactly to prepare them uh, to have the right kind of training um, and, and um, uh, train the trainer programs to be able to help uh, cities at the later stage all across the EU, perhaps with a number of so-called ambassador uh, hubs that can help uh, prepare uh, the necessary uh, training or skills and so on. But we will also re rely on some of the AI testing and experimentation facilities. We expect a number of those to also focus on smart cities and communities. So we will then need to see how exactly the ecosystem all fits together uh, with, for example, AI on, uh, on demand platform and the AI taps and then digital innovation hubs on the ground, essentially working with, for example, living labs that have a great knowledge on, for example, co-creation and engagement of citizens. So I think we just need to wait a little bit when, uh, once we know which ones are um, necessarily uh, part of the, the, the network, and then we'll be able to uh, let's say fine tune the, the exact way how they can get engaged, but we certainly count on them. And it's also part of the living in EU commitment for education and capacity building that we will be looking at these hubs and the living gaps that we already work with in the context of the living in EU community uh, to build capacity of cities, for example, for the development of, of digital twins. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we are a little bit uh run out of time, uh, I'm asking also to uh, to our host, but I would ask if I may last question uh, to, to Davor, uh, because we have talked about uh, the uh, standards uh, standards for data, for data sharing, et cetera, but, and how uh, this could be supported by MIMS, but I would ask in particular how MIMS can support uh, uh, also the new uh, business model behind. So we are looking about the different uh, um, dialogue between uh, the government and businesses, but also with the cities. And so in the new B2B, B2C, uh, B2, uh, B2G also aspect, how this could help. Yeah, so, so I think, you know, um, looking at kind of what's needed, uh, um, and, and that's kind of the, the, the point where I didn't get to, um, the, the MIM 1 and 2, uh, they're mainly based, or, or and, and the data models in a sense as well, um, uh, so on, and MIM 3 on interaction, so it opens up uh, a, a, a local entity or a business towards a city. What you need to also assure is kind of the integrity dimension. So you need to you know, be able to protect personal data, especially in the context of high, highly personalized real-time services, uh, things like that. What you also need to do is um, have a certain auditability uh, you know, to, to the AI you are introducing in any infrastructure. So that's um, um, MIM5 eh, on uh, FAIR AI. Uh, so uh, four is Helsinki, five is being championed by um, uh, Amsterdam. Uh, both are kind of making their way, uh, let's say, up to the right level. Uh, we, we, we also have um, one uh, upcoming on um, uh, geospatial information uh, uh, in collaboration with OGC uh, uh, under a new strategic partnership. Um, then we have one on security. Uh, that, that's also going to be announced. And then a, a kind of a cluster of MIMS on kind of the impact uh, side of things, which is, you know, your indicators, your analytics, and also kind of the resource management. And with those, I think you kind of cover uh, the needs, or, or at least for now, uh, of the local level. So all those MIMS, uh, they, they, they kind of all fit together, work together. Uh, the data models, they cross cut everything and the other ones support each other uh, and need each other in order to kind of push this digital transformation where it uh, should go is in a direction of a open standards based um, kind of a, a society governed uh, way. And I think uh, we, we're very happy to engage, uh, you know, um, on, on those terms with, with anyone. And, uh, yeah, thanks. You are muted, Roberto. No, yes. We have the last uh, few minutes uh, more. So if there are, the, there are some other question or uh, Vega. Uh, uh, the only thing that I'd like to, to, to ask is, for example, uh, here in, the, in this session, uh, we are talking about fiber. Uh, so uh, as a standard, as a common, pla common platform, but there are another European platforms and standards that uh, we can use. How, uh, which, uh, which barriers can create uh, to have several standards? So maybe 
Uh, one standard can be dedicated from one sector or another standard for other sectors. What do you think? I think it's a general question for all of us. Is that just to the group or because I think part of that um, is being resolved if you look at uh, the Living in EU initiative, that's specifically what it's trying to do. And I think it's trying to find kind of a best of all worlds model uh, where the different sides of the European Commission, different organizations, different interests converge on, you know, some scope that can help um, uh, the, the whole field forward. Uh, and that's that's uh, kind of encapsulated on, uh, under the MEMS Plus uh, vision, which is, I think, um, uh, well, re uh, at the heart of, of uh, at least the, the, the interoperability aspects of some of the, the work uh, uh, that's being done. So I think that's uh, where we sit. I think what's also important is to look at Europe in the world. Uh, so um, the, the, the export of the European continent to the rest of the world, of course, contributes to our uh, joint um, uh, prosperity. Uh, so in that sense, uh, we, 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 as, as well, we also engage and kind of promote uh, the work we do here in uh, the context of the UN. And I, I know, for, for example, Fireware is doing really relevant work in, uh, in India, but also all kinds of other places. So I think that it's, it's an ongoing uh, body of work and it's wayfinding and being respectful towards existing uh, uh, work and, and kind of finding a, a match there. Okay, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, together with the Vega, I would say thanks again uh, to all the to, to all the speakers. Uh, thanks for the fantastic journey uh, we have done in 90 minutes. Uh, thanks a lot. I apologize for the technical problem at the beginning. Sorry again. Sorry, Emanuele, if I had some problem uh, with uh, uh, with your slide. Uh, so now I I, I think uh, it's time for a group picture. Uh, if I'm not uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, just to, to close uh, the session. Um, Anna, are you with us? Yeah, the picture is done. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot again uh, to everybody and uh, hope to meet you soon in person uh, in the upcoming future. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, thank Bye. you. Bye.